Falcons made the switch at quarterback. Was it the right call? Let's get into it. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked on Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked on Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code in all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. So if you don't know me, I'm your very humble host of this illustrious podcast, Aaron Freeman. So right. humble. It's so, so humble, Jarvis. And uh, of course, I am joined as usual by Jarvis Davis to wrap up the week as we get geared up for this upcoming matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. But I, I apologize to you guys in advance because, you know, we haven't spent a, as much time talking about this upcoming game because it's been a busy week, right? It's a busy yeah. week. Stuff happened. Falcons made a quarterback switch. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. We'll uh, talk about, you know, there was all this possibility of a trade and we'll, we'll get Jarvis's thoughts on that. I know Jarvis has some thoughts about certain pass rushers, not going to Atlanta Falcons. We will talk about the Vikings game in this upcoming matchup, getting to some keys of victory, but we got to start with the big news of the day. Uh, and that was um, the Falcons making the switch from Desmond Ritter to Taylor Gabriel uh, and um, John again. Did I say Taylor Gabriel? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No. I, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's, let's start it like this, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, continue to, guys, you know, you come in every day or so you can watch me botch, you know, who the name of the quarterback is. You know, all you got to do is subscribe, follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. But, Jarvis, do you think the Falcons made the right call making a switch from Desmond Ritter to Taylor Heineke. I believe so, because like even before people were calling for his head after the fifth game or the fourth game or what have you, you know, some the impatience that is Atlanta fandom, it, it, it runs real deep down here. Um, and you know that. But I, I think that this is the right decision because you're in a situation where this is a winnable game and it's eerily similar to the last game that we played or the Falcons played. And that was a winnable game as well because coming in, we found out that Will Levis was going to be a starter or the primary starter and Malik Willis is going to play too. What? We have an open trials at quarterback? Okay. That's a situation that the defense should be able to take advantage of. But it didn't quite work out that way. So now you're coming in, Kirk Cousins done for the year. They trade for Josh Dobbs. People think he's going to be the starter. Okay, there might be somebody that might need be a pay attention to, but nope. We find out that Jaron Hall is going to be the star, the starting uh, quarterback and the rookie out of BYU. So all of those things kind of add up to, you know what? We may or may not have taken for granted of facing a rookie quarterback and thought you were going to be able to take advantage of it. And, you know, you went into that game with Desmond Ritter as a starter. But this week, nah, man. Like I gotta get a win. I and I really feel like this is a must-win game for this for this Falcons offense because the the defense has been doing their job the entire year. They've been pretty consistent, you know, outside of a couple big plays last week. But they've been pretty consistent all year, and it's just the offense that has been the issue. And I think that Arthur Smith, as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller for this team. Yeah, man, it's time to get it right because uh, 17, 18 points, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, I, I I see where your perspective is on that. And, you know, I I don't like the fact that the Falcons made the switch. I get okay. it. I, I feel like it's kind of an overcorrection to what happened last year where the Falcons were in a similar boat and everybody was calling for making Ooh. a quarterback change. You know, Ooh, can I say this? Go ahead. So. Remember when he didn't play the starters in, you know, the first year? And then he came back and pretty kind of overcorrected and saying, all right, everybody go play, you know? And it's just kind of like, 
when you make a mistake and you acknowledge that publicly, you don't have to, you know, go to the opera. You can't operate in extremes, right? Especially as a, as a football coach, because, you know, at some point, those guys in the locker room will start questioning your decision making skills. So, but yeah, I think you're onto something when you talk about that overcorrection. But, but like I said, I still do believe that it was the right decision, but I, I, I feel you on that whole overcorrection part because Arthur Smith is, is going to, by hook or by crook, going to quote unquote make it right. Make yeah. it, if he made a wrong decision, yeah, yeah, and ultimately at the end of the day, if they win the game, no one's going to be sitting here second guessing the decision. So I think you're right there, where it's it's kind of a must win sort of situation, um, especially given the decision making. I, I guess for me, my issue is, and this is something that you talked about on the Atlanta football party earlier this week. You talked about this specific play, but like I've been saying all week long, I, I feel like the Falcons' issues go beyond just the quarterback play. And I know Kurt Warner talked about this on his Twitter. And I know a lot of people probably saw that. He watched the Atlanta football party, I think. <laughs> yeah. He went and back and watched those plays. I, talk I, about. I know JT O'Sullivan <laughs> talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, right. Some of the mm-hmm. issues. And you talked about this specific play, that play where Jeffrey Simmons got a sack, right? Where he came right. free off the edge and Keith Smith kind of missed that block. And I certainly think you can look at that play and say, Desmond Ritter should probably dirt that ball rather than looking to make that throw down the field. But the thing that stood out to me about that play, because they ran it under Desmond Ritter early in the game and it resulted in a sack, and they ran it again under Taylor Heineke and it resulted in a, an explosive play. And it'll be easy to look at that play and say, oh, that's the difference in the quarterback. But if you go back and really watch the play, like they're both max protect plays, they're blocking yep. seven guys in on uh, when mm-hmm. when it's Desmond Ritter in the game. Tennessee's only rushing four guys and one of those guys comes free. So they're seven guys are blocking three guys and they're letting one guy go free. You watch Drake London. He's trying to get that over route and he's like not getting into his break as quickly. He's like, you know, 17 yards down the field before he's getting into that break on the over route. And then you run it in the third quarter with Taylor Heineke and Drake London's getting that break five yards early. So it's a half second faster. Tennessee's yeah, rushing five or six guys on that time. And you have seven guys in the protect. And guess what? They block all the guys. And so yeah. like, I sit here and I go like, I get why the quarterback is the focus of the conversation, but it's those things that the Falcons have to start doing right. That if you do those things right, it doesn't really, you know, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, but like, I feel like Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke are basically the same. And so if you can do all the, if the other 10 guys are doing their job, then the quarterback will do his job as well. And, and so like, that's to me the issues that I think the Falcons need to be addressing. And if Arthur Smith is just, it just, that's why I feel like it's just an overcorrection. It just feels like we're just going to make it about the quarterback when it's really the other 10 guys needing to do their job better to make this team play better moving forward. How do you think? And I think, and I think Kyle Pitts, I, I, th- I think you're, you're on it. You are, you, I think you're spot on because like, like I have my issues with Desmond Ritter. No, no, doubt, no doubt about it. But like, if, like you have a, a free rush, like Kurt Warner was asking the perfect questions. I was just like, why do you have a free rusher? Like, how who's supposed to be responsible for that cat? And I even say, regardless of what the what the uh, protection is, as a football player, if you see somebody having a free run at your quarterback and you at least glance over there, your butt better get over there and try to throw your whole body into that man's ankle or something to at least slow him down. Because he had no chance on that particular play. He may have had, I th- I do feel like he had some time to maybe try to throw it away or yeah, do yeah. something, but it just seemed like he was just so hesitant. And and when you got somebody six three, six four, three hundred and forty pounds coming down, coming down your 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 throat like that, yeah, I can see why he had some hesitation. But and I think Kyle Pitts kind of put it perfectly. He said they made some adjustments in the second half. And, and now granted, like I will give this team credit. Offensively and defensively, they've been able to go into halftime and come out and look better. You know, regardless of how they start the game, they've looked better in the second half of games. So I'm, I'm not too surprised that they made those necessary adjustments. But it's just, I just think at the end of the day, man, Desmond Ritter hasn't earned the benefit of the doubt. So I, I, I feel like even if Taylor Heineke comes out and has a, a okay game, and they find a way to win, guess what? People going to be like, man, let's ride with this cat because they, they got to go off of what they see. And what we've seen from Desmond Ritter, like we don't know if you're going to be 
throwing picks today or are you throwing are you fumbling the ball today? Which one is gonna be? So are you gonna be hesitant to throw get rid of the football? Or it's just it's just too many inconsistencies for for you to kind of continue to ride with this guy, especially when you got these two games that are they yeah, you should be six and four uh going into the bye. You know, and, and if you aren't six and four going to the bye, like at, at what point do you say enough is enough? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's that's it, and it, it goes back to again last year where the Falcons are four and four, and they had you know several five winnable games, and they, they come out of that stretch one and four, right. and you know by the time they get out of that stretch, the season's over, and I think Arthur Smith is like, I don't want to do that again. I want to try to win these games and, and go yep. into this by six and four, and and make the the mid season adjustments and come out and, and beat the Saints. You know, coming out of there, and you know, if, if the Falcons go on a three-game winning streak with Taylor Heineke, you know, they're going to build a statue for him. But right the thing for me, that and again, I'm not saying that they shouldn't, but I'm just saying like the thing to me that I'm going to be keeping my eye on is like, yeah, they they can win these next three games, and no one's going to be complaining about. It, but I'm curious what's going to happen a month from now when you get to have to go back on the road again against a really good Jets defense. Are these issues that we have seen? <laughs> consistently on the road where this team plays sloppy on it because that to me is the the bigger issue yeah man it's just we, we you know we joke about road ritter and all that stuff yeah but like like the falcon would it's just the falcons wake up in a, a weird hotel and like all of a sudden they just kind of forget how to play football and like that to me is the so like to me we you know again i don't i'm arthur smith i don't i don't want to get in hypotheticals but like i, I sit here and i go, that, that, that you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, they can win these next three games and it'll be great and we'll be sitting here like yeah their, their season's going strong and then right yeah they, they go up and, and lay an egg on the road and the jets in the same sloppy play that we've seen so consistently i mean like nothing's really changed at that point yeah. in time and that to me is the thing that is frustrating to me. So we'll see how it all turns out. But like, I do think these next two games and then the two games coming out of the bye are really going to kind of tell us a lot about what this team is uh, moving forward. And so we'll see, but we'll talk about what this team needs to do in order to win this week against the Minnesota Vikings. uh, As we continue on today's locked on Falcons. So, guys, I want to tell you about Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, right? And now that basketball season is here, you can pick combo projections across football, basketball, and their specials league. It's a league specifically created so that you can pick two or more players from different sports, right? And for example, tonight, Thursday night football, you got DeAndre Hopkins, and you can go with the NBA with Lowry Markinen. And you can combine them on receptions and three points made more or less on their projections that's all you got to do for prize picks to turn ten dollars into 250 dollars. it's simple pick two or more players more or less on the projection stats the more entries you make the more money you can make up to 25 times your money there's quick withdrawals easy gameplay enormous selection of players and stat types to make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use code in lowercase locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use promo code locked on NFL in lowercase. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. So, of course, because I have Jarvis Davis here, and if this is the first time you're watching Lockdown Falcons, welcome. This is illustrious podcast. Continue to make us your first listen. It will pay off for you, but I'm too humble to say stuff like that. But if you don't know Jarvis Davis, Jarvis Davis is... Uh, Locked on Sports Atlanta. He's also one of three people that is part of the Locked on NFL kickoff live each and every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's Jarvis. It's Tanisha Batiste. It's Kyle Krabs. They're getting you geared up for the weekend's action for all the NFL games, not just the Atlanta Falcons. But you don't need to have to subscribe to some special channel or anything like if you're subscribed to locked on falcons guys you will get that live if you're subscribed to any of the locked on nfl shows across the youtube network you will get it live friday 2 p.m be there be square fantasy tips betting insights all that and of course you get to see jarvis's handsome face smiling at you talking trash about this quarterback or that quarterback or this defensive lineman or that defensive line because you know jarvis is always saying all those things so go check out locked on it okay go watch for you guys is that a compliment i don't know i don't know i don't know i just i, I blacked Am out I being on the bus my face 
Are you doing it in my face? <laughs> I'm just talking. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Service. All right, let's get into this week nine game against the Minnesota Vikings. Um, oh, man. You know, I asked you, what do you think is sort of the key to victory for the Falcons to get a win this week? Wow. Um, I think, well, I guess since we've been talking so much about the offense, I think this is, I'll start there. How about this, man? Brian Flores is going to blitz. I think if you watched any team that he has coached in the past, the dude like to send pressure. That's one of the reasons why I feel like Taylor Heineke is going to be in there as well because he's been in the league for some time and he's seen a lot of different types of pressures and stuff like that. So I I think he'd be able to handle it accordingly. Um, Specifically, we're getting those, those... those offensive line calls on the reps and making sure everybody's going where they need to be. So I think protect and, and 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 get back to the basics, man. Like run the football. Like I know they've had some success running the football, you know, over these past few weeks or whatever. But it just seems like it's been weird with Bajan Robinson. I don't know what's going on. That's been weird. Um, like how he came out to start the season. How they were using him, it was really cool. Like, I mean, I know sometimes it, it may have seemed a little bit obvious, but it still was working. Bijan was uh, found a way to, to get a little mustard on it and, and get going. But, yeah, I, I think they need to to get that run game going. Figure out what the right combination is with Tyler Algier and Bijan. Like, I like them being in the game at the same time. I really do. I, I really think that that is something that can work out in your favor. So, uh. If they're able to run the football and, and, and get the, get that that aspect of the game going, I, I think they'll be fine. But as far as defensively, though, this is the first game that I'm going to be watching a while that 9-7 is not going to be on the field. Like, this is – it's been a minute. Like, what, he's missed three games since he's been a Falcon? <laughs> you know, so this guy – that can talk about consistency. That dude is the model of it, you know, in Flowery Branch. But – I, I'm interested to see what, you know, how can how much Kentavious Street plays, if at all. You know, there's a possibility that he might not dress, you know, just be, given how the guys they already have in the building and all that stuff, or whether or not he's going to be able to get up to speed. But I, I feel like ultimately he will, you know, because you, the more bodies that you have to try to, you know, supplement, you know, Grady not being in, I, I think the better. So, and you got to figure out a way to get some pressure on this quarterback. You got to speed up that clock. You got to speed up, speed up Jaren, um, Jaren Hall's clock. He can't be comfortable in the pocket. Like, it just can't happen. You can't have a rookie quarterback out there like, oh, okay, he's not open. Oh, 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 he's not open. Oh, okay, he's not open. Oh, yeah, let's do that too. And and I'm really interested to see what these, this, this four line uh, on third and long looks like because – with Dave Onyemata down in and down in the middle, I really want to see Calais Campbell play at D tackle spot, man. I really think he can do some good work down there as far as pushing that pocket, and then get on the KT in there uh, on, on opposite of Bud Dupree, and let's see what that looks like. Let's get let's 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 see what that rotation looks like. So I think that Ryan Nielsen is going to play around with that, and I like that. That's a combination that I would love to see. I want to see what that looks like. So. Yeah, I think that making sure that you put some pressure on their quarterback, don't let Jaren Hall get comfortable because they're, we, we've seen rookie quarterbacks do do some strange things to a Falcons defense, like literally just last week. Mm-hmm. And I remember back, to go back a little bit, I take it back in time, Geno Smith. I knew you Everybody were thought Geno <laughs> Smith was going to be the next coming after that game. I think it was a Thursday night game. Was yeah, it, it was, Thursday it was, night it was game? prime time. It was something. Yeah, it was a prime time, time game, yeah. And – Everybody was losing their minds. Like, Falcons defense had Jets fans, like, praising that man all the way back home until they found out he got, you know, got punched in his jaw and then his whole life changed. Um, but, yeah, Gino's, but yeah, Gino's, my, Gino's doing all right. He's doing all right right now. Yes, yeah. Gino's doing right. Yes, yeah. yes, he has. He has found a second coming, yes. you know, a resurrection out there in Seattle. So, yeah, good for him. But, for him. but yeah, I don't want to see another rookie quarterback get hyped up again. At, at four o'clock, I don't want to be talking about like, well, you know, has the Vikings found their quarterback of the future? It's like, all right, nah, man, come on, let's 
let's not do that again. Yeah. We, we, Will Levis is, is is about to be Brett Favre, and you know, like I don't want to see Jaron Hall being compared to Russell Wilson. Like I'm sorry, like <laughs> like can we can we not let a rookie quarterback? Can we let like a rookie quarterback look like a rookie quarterback? I guess yeah. that's that's what that's that's my statement. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree pretty much across the board with you, Jarvis. Like, you know, you you come out of the second half and you get that explosive run from Bijan to start things off, and it's like, oh. I I missed this. Nice I missed, to see you. I remember that. Yes. Uh, yes. Nice to see you again. I haven't yeah. seen hey, you. Hey, hey there, B. John. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's nice to see you again. Just to walk okay. on water. Yeah. Let's, let's do this again. What when where did that go? Like where, where? you know, <laughs> you know so what happened? Get back to doing that. I, I agree with you on, on, on all your other points. Um, and yeah, I, I've liked what Campbell has done. Early in the season, when he he only got a handful of snaps inside, but it, it seemed like he was consistently getting pressure when he was lined up over guards. And then yeah, you know, the last couple of weeks, you know, he's been better as an edge, you know, and so yeah. it hasn't been a, a major problem. But now I think you're right with with Grady being out, getting him more of those opportunities on the interior. I think we can we can see some really good things there. Uh, and you know, of course, everybody who is pushing for Arnold Abiketti to get more playing time. You know, we'll we'll see a lot more of Arnold and Kerry moving forward because we we will not be seeing a lot more of uh, other edge rushers in the building, and so we'll see what Jarvis thinks about you know now now he's let it marinate on his thoughts on the team's inaction at the trade deadline. So good, bad, or in between, it's tough to root for your favorite team on an empty stomach. So order your faves from DoorDash if your team's winning. Order something to celebrate if your team's losing. Order that pick me up. DoorDash has the unbeatable deals on everything you need for your watch party or tailgate. All your favorite restaurants, stores from retail to grocery are all in the app so that you can shop for everything you need to get game day ready. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more or on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and use code LOCKED23, don't forget to use that code LOCKED23, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3, for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. So Jarvis, Falcons were rumored to be shopping for pass rush help at the trade deadline. They did get Contavious Street. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you called it. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, they didn't get anybody else. And there's been a lot of talk in, in the last couple of days about, you know, various reports from like ESPN and whatnot that, you know, they were talking to Washington for Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat wanted to come here. The Falcons were like, hey, we got a deal for you. If you want to come and play for the next five years, we'll throw a bunch of money at you. And Montez Sweat's like, okay, that sounds good. And then Chicago's like, nah. He, he's ours. You're coming over here. Oh. And they swooped in, got him for a second round pick, which is probably going to be a very high second round pick. So the Falcons, only way that they could have probably – Stop that is to give up a first round pick. There was also, you know, Washington traded another guy by the name of Chase Young. He's mm -hmm. going to San Francisco. They mm -hmm. seem to be trying to do their best Philadelphia Eagles impression by just collecting all the pass rushers. If you were a first round pick, if you were a top 10 pick at some point in the last six years, you were going to play at some point for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, so Jarvis, that didn't happen. Right, trade didn't. Yeah, man. Didn't You've go down. had some time to think about it. Yes. What are your thoughts on the Falcons not trading for these players? Are they still the same? Are you are you still angry, like you were on Tuesday? What's going on? What's going on with you now? Wow, Sabusa. Um, <laughs> but like I kind of compare this to, um, because we were talking about kind of talking about security and VIP trying to get on, on the Atlanta football party on Tuesday. We were talking about Georgia Bulldogs specifically. And like when the deadline passed, I was just like, like the Falcons are that guy that's trying to get into the club at the VIP. It's packed. Everybody named mom out there. You seeing all the girls in the line and you walking up and you trying to go through the, you said in your mind that you're going to go to the VIP. You're going through the VIP. You're not waiting that regular line. You're trying to cut line and get up there and do your doggone thing. 
and you, you even got enough money to, to do whatever you need to do, and you get up to that line, and that security guard said, hey, man, you can skip this line right now in the VIP for $100. And you sat there and tried to negotiate the man to give him a $20 bill. <laughs> what are we talking about here, man? Like, you know the scenario when you come into the table? We heard the report. I know Chicago Bears, that's probably going to be a, 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 a late first round pick. You know, I get that. But we heard about the report about the Falcons offering a third the day before that came out. So, obviously, you guys have been in conversations with these dudes. The player wants to make it happen. Y'all already basically kind of came to a wink-wink deal. Hey, you know, we got the, we're going to get you this, this, this contract, too. We're going we're gonna to lace you up. You're going to be at home. You're going to be at the crib. Yeah, everybody all cool. And then next thing you know, Chicago comes in. Yeah, Chicago going to come in because you had the opportunity to get in and you didn't you didn't do what you needed to do. You tried to slide the little dub. And, oh, yeah, yeah, a little third round pick. You know, you know, y'all letting him go for a reason, you know, you know. He, he ain't all that good, you know, you know. Like, you know, <laughs> what you mean you didn't want a second round pick? You know, you know, like, no, go in. Because you planned for this. You had the money. You got the money. You had the doggone draft capital. Go do what you need to do. Get it done. There's no reason why Montez Sweat should be the Chicago Bear right now. Like I said, I, I understand the whole uh, uh, higher pick. More than likely it's going to end up the uh, cash out at, at, a higher, at a higher pick. I get that. But, like I said, that report came out before the, that doggone deal came through. So, I know maybe those conversations happen early on, but like it just seems like obviously you guys were in early because especially if you're talking about a, a contract, potential contract, you know, details uh, rolling out or a rumor to be out there. So it's just like, yeah, man, like you knew what time it was. You knew that, that you had a need and you've continued to have that need for so damn long. And you had opportunity to get it and you just didn't get it done. Sweeten the deal. Throwing a fourth. Throwing a fifth. Like what? Like whatever it takes. Let's go. Like do something. Get it. Get it done. Get the deal done. Because you had the 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 the, the built-in excuse of not being able to have the cash, cash strap, but that's not an issue anymore. Get the job done. Now I understand I'm not going at, after Chase Young. I would have been very skeptical of going after a guy like that because he just can't stay on the field. Like, I know he can play. He can play football. It just, he just can't stay on the field. And I, I'm not interested in investing, you know, into a guy who might not be there on Sunday. Like, because that's where it starts, right? Like, you got to be healthy and be, and be able to play. And then once you get on the field and be able to play, then you got to produce. I know once if he's on the field, he can produce, but I just don't know when he's going to be on the field, and I can't take that risk. Yeah. I got you. Well, Jarvis, uh, appreciate your words. We'll we'll leave it there. Uh, yes. No rebuttals for me. Um, I'll just say this: we get to watch a player that you know you, you still got hope because uh, this player didn't get traded to trade down. Uh, Daniel Hunter this weekend he he gets to go up against uh, your boy uh, Kayla McGarry. Uh, so <laughs> he'll be he'll be auditioning for uh, that job when he's a free agent. So. We'll, we'll see what what's what, guys. We'll be back, Jarvis, myself, and Sinitra Batiste on our Locked on Falcons postcast Sunday afternoon, immediately after the game on Locked on Sports Atlanta. Of course, check out Jarvis on Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern on Locked on NFL Kickoff Live across the Locked on Podcast Network. And, of course, we'll continue to be your first listen. You know, I may wake up tomorrow, still have some thoughts about this quarterback thing, so we might even throw an extra podcast for you guys uh, this week. So, Continue to make us your first listen. Uh, it's all part of Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.